Hi writers, it's Megan in All Writers Welcome, live in the Facebook group, here to talk about a simple tool for creating scenes and characters with purpose. And the two exciting things there are simple tool, ooh, something you can use, doesn't require any technology, it's very easy to do. And then purpose, creating scenes and characters with purpose, the things you really need in your novel that help take you forward. So when we start writing, a lot of us think, oh, got to get the details, got to get the details, got to get the details, right? I got to plan what will happen. And that means I have to go really in depth to the details of the people and the scenes in the world and all that kind of stuff. So what we generally do is we start doing character descriptions or dossiers, or we start world building, or we start going um, really in depth to descriptions or settings or exactly what's going to happen um, in each conflict. And maybe that means we start trying to outline everything in great detail. But that is super overwhelming. So I'm going to show you something you can do instead of getting lost in the details. Um, and to show you the power of that, I want you to think about a realm outside of writing. So imagine you want to buy a gift for your mom and you walk into a store or maybe you walk into a whole mall and what are you surrounded by? Details, right? All these possibilities. You go, oh man, so overwhelming. I don't know what to get mom. Okay. Imagine if before you walked into the store, you walked into the mall, you had this really clear thought. You went, oh, you know, mom just found those beautiful crocheted doilies that her grandmother made. Oh, and I know she's dying for a place to display them. And then you walk into the store or you walk into the mall and now you've got a purpose. You're like, I'm looking for something mom could use to display those beautiful crochet doilies. Now, there are a lot of things that would work for that. But when you're shopping, when you're looking, all of a sudden you have purpose. And so it's a lot easier to choose something. Okay, so now take that experience we probably all had with having a hard time finding a gift for somebody and let's bring it back to writing. Can you see the power of having purpose? And when you work from purpose, it means you know um, what you want something in your writing to fulfill. You know, I want a character who would get this accomplished or would do this or would affect my protagonist in some way. Or I want a scene that would have this impact on my protagonist. Um, and that from there, you can start thinking of details and you'll be limited. So basically what you're doing is limiting the choices from everything to what would fulfill a specific purpose. All right. If that sounds good, then let's let's get to the simple tool. All right, so the simple tool, the solution for um, writing with purpose and not getting stuck in the details is to create a mind map. Ooh, a mind map is a type of brainstorm and it involves organizing information by grouping ideas together. And the purpose of it is so that you can quickly glance and have an, a sense of which ideas go together. And sometimes that means one idea leads you to others. So if I think of, um, you know, a, a purpose I have, then I might come up with several different choices for for achieving that purpose. I might come up with a lot of different ways to accomplish that one goal. And then once I have those all written down, I could decide among them. Or it might mean I have one idea linking to another, you know, first this will happen, which leads to this, which leads to this, which leads to this different things come out different um, on different mind maps. So it's just about getting your ideas down and being playful and experimental. All right. So when you are looking for purpose in your writing and you're using your mind map, what you're going to do is think of what you need your character to go through. So I'm imagining a, a protagonist, Jill, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I need a scene where um, Jill wants to impress Mark. Ooh. And then that leads me to a lot of other questions. I'm not sure yet 
how she should impress him, what would impress Mark, what skills does Jill have that I really want her to show. But I would put, you know, I've got Jill in the middle of my mind map and I would put, ooh, impress Mark. That's one thing I know should happen. Could happen in a lot of different ways, but that's one goal. Maybe another um, piece of my mind map would be a particular character. I want there to be some character who um, accuses Jill of something and that will give me a chance to show how Jill really values being seen as trustworthy. So I'll start just populating my mind map with what I want my protagonist to go through. And that starts giving me purpose. Ooh, a scene where she's going to impress somebody, a character who's going to accuse her of something. And I'll start to gather those purposes. All right. So when you create that mind map, you're not looking for specifics. My, listen again to my examples, you know, where Jill can impress Mark. That might be any number of things. It might be with her knowledge. It might be that she knows how to fix a transmission, right? Depending on who my characters are, I've got a ton of options. So to get you to those purposes, here are some, um, here's some language you might have in mind. Um, what do you want to reveal? What do you want to force a character to choose? What do you want to push a character to do? Um, is there a place where you need to explain why that could be your purpose? Or your purpose might be to make the reader feel sympathy or hate or um, to relate to a character. And there are a ton more purposes you could have, but those I hope just get you started thinking about how to create a purpose for your, your, uh, your scenes and thinking, okay, what do I need to have my protagonist go through? So start building your mind map with your purposes around the outside. Um, once you've got some purposes set up, here's your next step. Now you're ready to go shopping. This is just like the example with looking for a gift for your mom. Once you know, okay, I want something that fulfills this purpose of Jill being able to impress Mark, you can look at scene studies or character studies you've already created. You can um, look at free writes you've done. You can go shopping in what you've already mapped out or even written or drafted. You may have done some idea gathering, said, oh, you know, I would just love for there to be a scene in this particular setting just because that's such an important setting in my world. Ooh, well, you know, start shopping there. Could that be the place where Jill impresses Mark, right? Start looking through what you already have. And of course, you can create new material as well. You can draft new material, but whether you're shopping or creating new material, you're going to work more efficiently and more effectively when you have that purpose and you know what that scene is for. All right, so your action, to take your assignment, should you choose to accept it, is to create a mind map. And again, you're gonna take your protagonist, put that person in the center of the paper, and around your protagonist, you're gonna start writing down some of the milestones you want your reader to see. And that could be a, a you know, way this person feels, a decision she has to make, um, a conflict she's gonna get into with somebody, um, you know, any of the moments that you want her to go through and they don't have to be in order you don't have to know which one you want to have first it's just putting placing them all around so things like you know i've got my protagonist in the in the middle and then i want to show he's terrified of commitment that's one idea that comes up uh, but i also want to show his love for bunny rabbits um and i also want to show how angry he is toward his father you know and and i'll map those in and create the purpose. Now, this mind map is going to be incredibly helpful for you in planning because you can take simply that mind map and you can start turning that into an outline by putting those moments in order. You know, oh, what do I want readers to learn about him first? Will it be that he loves bunny rabbits or that he's angry at his dad? And you can start putting those in order. But another thing you can do once you have this mind map is to create baby mind maps. <laughs> and what you'll do with your baby mind maps is take any one of those um, purposes and put that in the center of a paper, put that in the middle of its own mind map and brainstorm like your life depends on it and write down every idea you have coming off 
of that central idea, coming off of that purpose for how that could be shown. And what you're doing there is getting down to the specifics. That's the place where you're saying, ooh, what scene or what character or what moment in my novel could help me achieve this purpose? But you're coming at it from the purpose so you'll be able to choose your best ideas from that mind map. All right, um, if you complete a mind map, it would be so cool if you share it, take a photo and share it in the, the comments of this. I think that we all get inspired by seeing what other people do to plan. Um, planning can be a very solitary activity when we're working on what to put in our novels. And sometimes just a glimpse into how somebody else does it can be really inspiring, can um, help us think of uh, great ideas and say, oh yeah, now now it makes sense. Now I can um, imagine it. So if you take action and you create a mind map for your novel, I invite you to share it in the comments. And um, if you have other um, brainstorming activities that you really enjoy, let's hear about those. Post those in the comments as well. All right. So I want to open it up. If anybody has questions, please feel free to put them in the comments in the Facebook Live, um, maybe about brainstorming, maybe about purpose or finding your character's purpose. Um, and while you're thinking of questions, let me answer one that may be on your mind. And that would be, Megan, what do I do if I don't know those kinds of purposes. You know, it's like, oh, you you were outlining things like, I want a place where Jill um, will impress Mark, and I want a place where Jill will show that she um, really needs to be trusted. You go, what if I don't know those things? That's a really great indicator that you need to return to your central conflict. So if you feel like, hey, I can't do this in my map because I don't have the, um, this, the basic knowledge of my story or the of my protagonist, that means it's definitely time to return to your central conflict or maybe even a step before that, your mission statement. So this is also kind of a good litmus test for you. Do I have enough information actually to be drafting or do, you need, do I need to go back to one of my previous planning stages? Okay, looks like there aren't any questions, so I will wrap for now. And again, I challenge you, go make your purpose mind map and share a picture of it with us so we can all get inspired by the writing you're doing. All right. Happy writing, everybody. Until next time. Take care. Bye.